Welcome to the ISART 2022 tutorial on the Interdepartment Radio Advisory Committee, fondly known as the IRAC. This tutorial will provide a brief overview of the IRAC and its role and impact on technical and policy issues regarding spectrum sharing. I am Peter Tenhula, Senior Fellow with the Spectrum Policy Initiative at the Silicon Flatirons Center for Law, Technology, and Entrepreneurship at the University of Colorado Boulder. Before retiring from federal service in 2021, I served as the chair of the IRAC and was the deputy associate administrator in the Office of Spectrum Management at the National Telecommunications and Information Administration, or NTIA. I also worked at the Federal Communications Commission, or FCC, for a little more than 15 years, and I also worked in the private sector for about six years. This tutorial represents my own personal views and perspectives. Anything presented here does not necessarily represent the views of NTIA, the FCC, Silicon Flatirons, any of my other former employers, my wife, my kids, or anyone else that I might know. In this tutorial, I will first explain how the IRAC fits within the overall U.S. spectrum policy and management framework. Then, I will describe the current membership and structure of the IRAC and highlight some of the long-running committee's historical background. Finally, I'll discuss the interagency coordination process and its role and impact on technical and policy issues regarding spectrum sharing. The introductory talk by Rebecca Dorch in this tutorial series provided an overview of the dual spectrum management structure in the US. In the US. To quickly recap, under the Communications Act of 1934 and the NTA Organization Act, Spectrum management responsibilities and policy functions are split between the Federal Communications Commission, an independent agency, and NTAA, a bureau within the U.S. Department of Commerce. In sum, the FCC is responsible for regulating the spectrum resources used by non-federal users, and NTAA oversees the use of spectrum by federal government agencies. NTA spectrum management rules are published in the Manual of Regulations and Procedures for Federal Radio Frequency Management also known as the Red Book. Coordination of national spectrum policy and management issues between the FCC and NTAA occurs at several levels and is generally governed by a memorandum of understanding between the two agencies that was executed in 2003. While the current MOU does not specifically mention the IRAC or other interagency advisory groups, I will address the interagency coordination process later. Another interagency advisory body is the Policy and Plan Steering Group, PPSG, which was established by NTA in 2005. The PPSG includes higher-level representatives at the Assistant Secretary or equivalent level from agencies that are major stakeholders in the spectrum issues under consideration and includes FCC and White House representatives. The PPSG provides advice to the NTA Assistant Secretary on spectrum-dependent telecommunication policies, strategic plans, and helps resolve major contentious spectrum policy issues. Within this dual structure, the IRAC provides advice to NTIA on a wide range of matters, from assigning frequencies to U.S. government radio stations to developing policies, programs, procedures, and technical criteria pertaining to the federal agency's use of spectrum, most of which are documented in the IRAC's recommended changes to the NTIA manual. This slide shows the 19 federal agencies that make up the IRAC membership. The IRAC bylaws contained in Chapter 1 of the NTA manual provide that the basic role of agency representatives appointed to serve on the IRAC is to function, when in committee, in the interest of the United States as a whole. Most agencies have a primary representative and one or more alternates. The names and contact information for the current IRAC members are available on the NTA website, www.ntia.gov slash category slash IRAC. There are three observer agencies, and the FCC has a liaison representative and alternates. NTIA appoints the chairperson and vice chairperson of the IRAC, an agency vice chairperson, is elected by the IRAC members for a three-year term. The duties of the agency vice chairperson include the review of meeting agendas from the agency's perspective, 
coordination of issues with the chairperson, and developing and presenting agency member concerns to the IRAC or NTIA. The IRAC meets once a month. This slide shows the structure of the IRAC, including the six standing subcommittees and four currently active ad hoc groups. Most of the work of the IRAC takes place or originates in the subcommittees. Each subcommittee's assigned functions are set forth in the IRAC bylaws. The duties and objectives of the ad hoc groups are set forth in the terms of reference that are approved by the IRAC. Each subcommittee is chaired by staff from NTI's Office of Spectrum Management. Each ad hoc group has a convener, typically OSM staff, except that other agency representatives have served as conveners. For example, the agency vice chair of the IRAC typically serves as a convener for ad hoc group 213 on IRAC operations and procedures. Ad hoc 206 usually gets reactivated immediately following a world radio conference. Secretariat functions are handled by NTI's Office of Spectrum Management for the full committee and each subcommittee. The IRAC was established 100 years ago by Secretary of Commerce Herbert Hoover, and its first meeting was held on June 1, 1922. It is the longest continuously serving interagency advisory committee within the federal government. Its original purpose was to find means for making the most effective use of radio technology then being used for government broadcasting services. Originally named the Interdepartment Advisory Committee on Governmental Radio Broadcasting, it soon recognized the need to consider other telecommunication matters of interest to the departments and agencies, and in 1923 changed its name to the Interdepartment Radio Advisory Committee. The IRAC has a rich history and has had a significant role in most every spectrum supported development, from maritime services to FM and TV broadcasting, to aviation, to advanced mobile and radar capabilities, to satellite communications, to spread spectrum techniques, and many more innovations over the decades. With the, enact with the enactment of the 1927 Radio Act, the dual authorities of the Federal Radio Commission and the President under the new law require the IRAC to continue its role as advisor to the President related to the constitutional responsibilities of Chief Executive and his Commander-in-Chief to manage access to spectrum by federal government radio stations. Under President Franklin Roosevelt in the 1930s and early 1940s, oversight of the IRAC shifted to the newly formed FCC in 1934 and the FCC's Board of War Communications during World War II. In 1940, the first coordination memorandum was approved by the FCC and the IRAC, stating that each organization will give notice to all proposed actions which would tend to cause interference to non-government or government station operations. During the Truman administration and following a comprehensive evaluation of U.S. telecommunications regulatory structure by the Communications Policy Board, chaired by Irvin Stewart, the IRAC was reconstituted under a new White House telecommunications advisor to the president. That is when the FCC became a liaison member of the IRAC. A few more highlights from the past several decades. The first manual of regulations and procedures for frequency management was approved by White House Director of Telecommunications Management in 1965. When NTIA was established by President Carter in an executive order, he stated that the Secretary of Commerce, to the extent he deems it necessary, may continue the, the Interdepartment Radio Advisory Committee, and that committee shall serve in an advisory capacity to the Secretary. That executive order was codified in 1992 in the NTIA Organization Act, which references the IRAC's advisory role in Section 105B. As I mentioned earlier, the current FCC NTIA coordination framework for spectrum matters is implemented under a 2003 MOU. 
According to a March 2022 FCC-NTA joint press release, this MOU is the subject of review and recommended revisions by a bilateral task force of NTA and FCC staff. Some of the current MOU's provisions are very similar to those contained in the 1940 Memorandum. The next IRAC meeting will be its 2060th. Under the current coordination framework and NTA's implementation of the 2003 MOU, I would guess that the bulk of the agenda for the next meeting constitutes a number of pending FCC rulemaking and adjudicatory matters that are being coordinated with NTIA and through the IRAC with the other federal agencies. To conclude this tutorial, I would like to provide a quick overview of how the FCC NTIA MOU was implemented when I was chair of the IRAC and describe how most policy and routine licensing matters were coordinated. First, some legal authorities and regulations to be aware of in connection with federal agency inputs into FCC proceedings. The NTA Organization Act gives NTA the, quote, responsibility to ensure that the views of the executive branch on telecommunications matters are effectively presented to the FCC, end quote. This means that other executive branch agencies usually need to go through NTA before making filings with the FCC on spectrum or other telecommunications policy matters. The FCC's rules provide NTA and other federal agencies with which the FCC shares jurisdiction, flexibility regarding interagency deliberations and making public filings in FCC proceedings. If the FCC's proposed action must rely on the agency's disclosure, the rules provide for advanced coordination to ensure that the, agencies, the agency involved retains control over the timing and extent of any disclosure that may have an impact on that agency's jurisdictional responsibilities. If the agency involved does not wish such information to be disclosed, the Commission will not disclose it and may disregard it in its decision-making process. Under the FCC and NTA, and the FCC NTA MOU that I mentioned before, uh, the two agencies have agreed to provide each other at least 15 business days notice of proposed actions that could potentially cause interference to government or non-government operations. The way this usually worked for FCC actions when I was the IRAC chair, and I assume is still the process, is that the IRAC chair or vice chair would chair draft items that NTA staff gets uh, from the FCC staff for coordination with the IRAC member agencies. Agencies would typically get 10 business days to provide feedback to NTA staff and Based on these inputs and its own review, NTA would informally give its thoughts and feedback on the proposed action items, which are also discussed at IRAC meetings. While these internal government documents and deliberations are not available to the public, NTA often submits comments or filings into the public record of key proceedings. Under the MOU, final action by the FCC does not require approval by NTA. But the current MOU also says that the FCC and NTA will resolve technical, procedural, and policy differences by consensus whenever possible. Routine federal assignments, FCC license applications, and requests for special temporary or experimental authority are coordinated through IRAC's Frequency Assignment Subcommittee and usually take less than 15 days to comp complete coordination. Under the 1940 and 2003 MOUs, the FCC and NTA agreed to maintain current lists of assignments and to exchange information necessary to coordinate spectrum use. NTA's website includes additional information, such as a list of non-federal license applications that the FCC is coordinating with the NTA and the IRAC. This list is available at www.ntia.gov webcord, W-E-B-C-O-O-R-D. But this list does not currently include pending requests for FCC Special Temporary Authorizations, or STAs, and it does not include, does not include non-routine applications that require waivers or written FCC decisions. Chapter 11 of the NTA Manual 
provides information on public access to the IRAC and NTA's federal spectrum management process. Since most of the spectrum is allocated for shared federal and non-federal use, or these uses are in adjacent bands, the IRAC plays an important role and often has a significant impact on many high-profile technical and policy issues regarding spectrum sharing and repurposing. The federal agencies on the IRAC, as well as the PPSG, provide valuable advice and recommendations to NTA under a collegial process that has worked well for a century. I hope that the information provided in this tutorial was helpful to you. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at the email on this slide. Additional information on the IRAC and the NTA manual is available at these hyperlinks. Thank you for your attention. I hope that you enjoy ISART 2022.